Greetings, you unruly mob. I hope you're doing well. This is the Crack a Pack on LRRMTG, and my name is Graham. And today we are opening a pack of Midnight Hunt or Innistrad Midnight Hunt, to use its government name. This was given to us by Cheesemo from the chat and the Discord during um, f Friday night's filming, the 21st of May, 2024. No. No spoilers, but uh, Chismo was uh, uh, very critical in uh, in helping us with one of the locations that we needed access to to uh, make Friday nights work, and then he surprised us with a crack a pack during filming. So we thought, let's let's see what's inside it, and it's nothing. Our first card is one of the. Double face reminder cards. You can use this card to represent a double face card. Can I? I bet I can use it for other stuff too. I like that it's just the art on it. You can't really tell. It's just like a, a minor landscape that's mostly covered by this text box, but it is by <laughs> Donato Giancola, which is very funny to me that they got an artist of that caliber to be like, ah, and then we'll just cover it with stuff. I assume it's from something else. Uh, what? How is this? How are these collated? Backwards. All right, we'll start at the other end. This is a draft booster, but it is collated backwards from other draft boosters I've used. First up, Eccentric Farmer. Two and a green for a 2-3. When it enters the battlefield, mill three cards. You may then return a land card from your graveyard to your hand. You know what? It was pretty good then, and at time of recording, it's pretty good now in Thunder Junction. It's not the same card. There's a different... It's almost the same. Uh, the one from Thunder Junction is basically identical, but it has to be a land from those three milled cards, and if it whiffs, you get a treasure token. But still, broadly speaking, the design, the bones of the design have merit. It's an Innistrad set. There's a lot of bones. Next, Brimstone Vandal. It's also a 2 3 for 3, so they can just fight all day long, except that they won't because this one has Menace, and if it is neither day nor night, it becomes day as Brimstone Vandal enters the battlefield. We will introduce the concept of time to the game if it did not previously exist already. And whenever day becomes night or night becomes day, Brimstone Vandal deals one damage to each opponent. Surely they could have come up with a keyword for that. I know it's only been in this set, but whenever day becomes night or night becomes day is a lot of words. Like, I don't know, day shift, time flip, literally anything. Uh, that one's fun. It's You could do some ping stuff with it. It's it's a, it's a It's got menace. It's nice. Next. Oh, Diagraph Horde. Four and a black for a three, four zombie. And when it enters the battlefield, you create two, two, two black zombie creature tokens with decayed. When you do, exile up to two target cards from graveyards. It's Grave Papa, so-called because Grave Titan does a 6-6 six, six for 6 that makes two zombies when it enters the battlefield or attacks. It was previously referred to as Grave Daddy. Not by me, but your mileage may vary. And so people started calling this one Grave Papa because it's a little smaller. I guess that's fewer letters. Anyway, Decayed, for those who might need a reminder of how Decayed worked, was it took a long time to resolve the animations on Arena. That's my main memory of Decayed. No, it was basically the zombie got to attack once. It could attack and then deal damage, and then in the end of combat step, it just fell apart, which is what would happen in a zombie apocalypse, and why just stay inside, you know, use your earthquake kit. That's not a universal experience. We have an earthquake kit because we live in the Ring of Fire. But, uh, you know, stay indoors, and after not too long, they will fall apart. Also, it's fiction. Next, Candle Grove Witch. Ooh, but a special one. We got a showcase frame Candle Grove Witch with the cool um, Harvest Tide. Is that the name of the festival? It's been a while since I actually drafted this set. It's one and a white for a 2-2 human warlock with coven. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you control three or more creatures with different powers, Candle Grove Witch gains flying until end of turn. I think we've talked about Candle Grove Witch before, or, or at least similar, this similar effect. 
There's cards like Dust Walker from Amonkhet that like it's a two two for one and a white, but if you exert it, it flies or something like that. So it's it's a white bear that flies conditionally. And also this one looks fancy. Stuffed Bear is a two mana artifact. That's it. But you can pay two mana and it becomes a 4-4 green bear artifact creature until end of turn. This seemed, as much as I love bears, this seemed not great early on. And then I swear I saw Kenji, Numa the Nummy, draft a deck with like four of these. And it was surprisingly effective in numbers, but I don't really know why. I think it's better than I'm willing to give it credit, but not amazing. What are your experiences with stuffing the bear? Tell me below. I won't read them. That's not true. I I do I do read them. I shouldn't. Bramble armor. One ant. Boy, this printing looks bad. They have improved since then. This was and it it's it feels flimsy. This was like the the nadir, I think of of Magic's struggles with card quality because I just opened some Modern Horizons three today and the cards feel nice and the contrast looks good. This doesn't. Bramble Armor is one in a green for an artifact equipment. When it enters the battlefield, you attach it to a creature. So the first equip is free. The equipped creature gets plus two, plus one, and it equips for four. And because Bramble Armor was in both Midnight Hunt and Crimson Vow, you could open a pack with two of them in double feature. Hey! Less said about double feature, the better. Ah! Oh, sorry. Startle is next. It's one and a blue for an instant. Target creature gets minus two, minus oh until end of turn and you create a 2-2 black zombie with Decayed. Oh, the Decayed creatures also can't block. I forgot to mention that. That's sort of a key point. So you couldn't use this to make their thing smaller, and then also you get a zombie and you surprise block with it. They were too weak to block. But you did get a zombie and took less damage, and also there's more text. Draw a card. Startle was... I liked it. I like cards like that. Soul Guide Griff. Soul Guide. Soul Guide. It's hyphenated. Soul Guide. Griff. Yeah, we'll go with that. Four and a white for a three, four hippogriff spirit with flying. And when it enters the battlefield, exile up to one target card from a graveyard. Now, why, why might you be so keen between this and Grave Papa over there be so keen to exile cards from graveyards beyond, you know, just the obvious, generally speaking, they're a resource because of Disturb. There was a mechanic where if the thing died, then it would sit in the graveyard and then you could recast it. Well, and flashback as well from the graveyard. There's a lot of graveyard synergies in this set. Sets. In these sets. This was generally a very good thing. Are we on to uncommons yet? I think we are. Nope. One more common at least. We got Gavany Silversmith. Three and a white for a two, three human soldier. And when it enters the battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter on each of up to two target creatures. One of them could be this guy. So it could be a three, four for four and a plus one, plus one counter somewhere else. And yeah, that's fine. Or you could put them other places. And that tended to be what I saw happen. And it tended to hurt. Another common, a Harvest Tide Infiltrator. So it was Harvest Tide. That's what I said earlier, and I was correct the whole time. Waha! Two and a red for a 3-2 Human Werewolf with Trample and Daybound. Meaning, if a player casts no spells during their own turn, it's different from Old Werewolves. If a player casts no spells during their own turn, it becomes Night next turn. We actually have the token for that. There it is. Daytime. Nighttime. Daytime. Nighttime! And nighttime says, if a player casts two spells during their own turn, it becomes day next turn. This is the daytime side. This is the daybound side. It's a 3-2 with trample. But what happens on the spooky side? It's the harvest tide assailant. It's a 4-4 with trample. Great. This was not one of the more exciting werewolves. And once again, werewolves, I recall people being like, oh, they fixed it. They... They made the they made the transform mechanic different, which people didn't like, but better, like easier to track and figure out, and just sort of cleaner overall. Which that was nice, and still werewolves seemed under underwhelming. Tovalar was cool. There were some good werewolves, but like as a as a cohort, they didn't seem like maybe as powerful as people would have liked. Infernal Graps. I'll read that again. Infernal Grasp. 
It's one and a black. For an instant, destroy a target creature, you lose two life. Sure. Sometimes you gotta kill something. Ooh. Dawn Heart Mentor, also Harvest Tide version. That's some very cool stylized art. Dawn Heart Mentor is two and a green for a 0-4 human warlock. And when Dawn Heart Mentor enters the battlefield, you create a 1-1 white human creature token. So you get the 0-4 and the 1-1. And it has Coven. For five and a green, target creature you control gets plus three, plus three, and trample until end of turn, but you can only activate it if you control creatures with three or more different powers. But this gives you two of them right away. And then you can thread of activation to give something plus three, plus three, and trample. Cool. One more uncommon, it's Dissipate. One blue blue for an instant counter target spell. If that spell is countered this way, exile instead of putting it into its owner's graveyard. Just make it go away forever. We do have a land, which is one of the full art black and white basics. Very cool looking. I love these. We can't use them on camera because they just all look like swamps. But they're very cool and are rare. Wow. Ooh. It's actually one of the very powerful werewolves. It's not Tovalar, but it is Tovalar's Huntmaster for green green for a 6-6 six, six human werewolf. When it enters the battlefield, you create two green green wolf creature tokens, and he's got Daybound, and this is also the Harvest Tide showcase frame. And the Nightbound side is a 7-7, seven, seven, so, you know, a little bit of a level up. 6-6 six, six into a 7-7. Seven, seven. That means he must be an absolute unit of a human. When Tovalar's pack leader, as it becomes, enters the battlefield or attacks, create two two green wolf creature tokens. So very similar to the Grave Titan I described earlier, but it's wolf, wolf titan, wolf titan. Further abilities exist. For two green green, another target wolf or werewolf you control fights a creature you don't control. Yeah, it's uh, some, some powerful stuff. So this is something I've actually only really just paid attention to now. We have the Harvest Tide in green for the Dawnheart Mentor here. And then Tovalar's Huntmaster also Harvest Tide. Uh, in green. The leaves, because they are both green cards, are nearly the same color. There's some slight changes in saturation, but Tovalar's Huntmaster has that sun motif over the top corner of the name there because it's a daybound, nightbound card. And then on the back, the border is darker with a crescent moon around it there, which is a super cool detail that I very much enjoy. I like that Huntmaster a lot. If I'm in draft, I'm windmill slamming Tovalar's Huntmaster because this card is just messed up good. In terms of value, the whole pack is worth 236, 230 something, over half of which is Infernal Grasp, which is clocking it over a dollar, which is impressive for Infernal Grasp and kind of disappointing for all these other cards, but hey, at least they're here. That's neat. Infernal Grasp is a defensible pick as well, but then so is Diagraph Horde but I think that Tovalar's Huntmaster is, I mean, in general. In this pack, Tovalar's Huntmaster is fairly inarguable, I would allege. That is going to do it for the Cracker Pack for this time. Thank you to Cheesemo for giving us this pack of Midnight Hunt during Friday night's filming. That was a pleasant surprise. And uh, until next time, I want to remind you of a variety of things, not the least of which is that you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash loading ready run or by becoming a member on this very YouTube channel. And until next time, I have been Graham with James on Tech, Matt edits these with Jordan, Heather gets them online. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll talk to you next time. Bye everybody.